Hello everyone on the internet and thanks for tuning in. And welcome to another episode with me, Masuada Bushido, and with my ticker bar on the other side of the INSIDE THE MAN! N I N I NIN 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 Besides my brother just shunning that to one side, yes. We are back after Fortnite with another edition of Toku Talk. Woo! So yeah. So this will be our third November instalment and yes, for those that don't our know final November instalment. Cause you've been dying to do a December one, but it's just not December yet, bro. I'm talking. I'm talking to the viewers. Anyway, so as I was saying, that uh, for those that aren't aware about our Toku Talk, what we do is we literally talk about Tokusatsu on our talk. Uh, for anything that's been happening in past, present, and any on the forthcoming future. We just ramble, 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 ramble. And just before uh, I see Flavor Man absolutely excited and hyped about talking about stuff, I have a little announcement to make for the viewers. So you already made it the last topic talk, but go on, do it again. At the end, I did, so shush it. So, for our last December Toku Talk, we will be doing a QA. and a uh, This is where you guys are welcome to throw out questions, and we will answer them to the best of our abilities. Otherwise, I have made my peace. Flavorman, thy go. Okay, so I literally only just watched episode 19 of Power Rangers Dino Charge. Hooray, so that's what we're going to kick off with. Right, so basically last week okay. and this week... No, no, raise your head, boy, boy, boy. Professionalism. Right, so Power Rangers Dino Charge. Uh, the last week was actually the introduction to the Purple Ranger. What do they call um, it? The Purple Ranger. A what? The Purple Ranger. No graphite or whatever bullshit. No, no. Uh, I'm no. They. I don't think they called him a violet. I think they called him Purple. I don't remember them calling him Violet Ranger because obviously it's Kyoru based on Kyoru Violet. And they, yeah, they did. They have actually gone with the not. Bleh, bleh. They have basic Profe professionalism. <laughs> yes, hold on. I'm trying to get my words out. Right. So with Power Rangers Dino Charge, they've basically done something that's not too different, but not that similar to Kyoryuja. What the hell is that, that supposed to the, mean? That the Purple Ranger, you know, was originally the power of an old man. Right. So just like in Kyoryuja. You got Doctor Ulshade, who then gave the power, passed on the power to his granddaughter. What they did in last week's Dino Charge is because Power Rangers is filmed in New Zealand, but they're pretending to be in America, which they didn't really establish properly until like this week's episode. But last week they're like, "Oh, we're all going to New Zealand to find," because apparently they got some signature or something. Because that's how this series works. So even though they, even though it's filmed in New Zealand, they then end up going to New Zealand, and you see all the New Zealand landmarks and stuff. And then they just come across this like really weird old man um, who runs like an adventure park or some weird, yeah, you know, like he has like all these exhibits of Bigfoot and whatnot. And he ends up being like the Purple Rangers. He just runs around New Zealand saving people and, you know, like stopping muggers and stuff. Which you're kind of like, yeah, all right. And then, so the Power Rangers, the, the other six, try to sort of like coax him in, oh, you know, come join our team and that. And then it just, you know, and then he's like, oh, but I just save, you know, I just stop muggers and stuff as the Purple Rangers. You guys are fighting monsters, and he just starts acting all scared and that. He's like, "Oh well, I never really met Bigfoot," and I, you know, he starts off the episode wearing an eye patch, and he's like, "Oh, this eye patch is fake," and blah blah blah. And then, you know, and then you sort of see him like acting like an old man, but he can fight, which is the weird thing. It was like Doctor Ulsha that he'd like, he'd sort of like, he'd just sort of like freeze up his muscles would sort of freeze and that. No, not just but that, but also Doctor Ulsha. He's just generally old. 
Yeah, yeah, he's old and fragile, and even if he has still the youth in him, he is literally, his body is old. He is literally... Yeah. It, well, and, yeah. Yeah, so every time he tries to swing or act too hard, he just probably his pops... Muscles, he, 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 yeah, yeah, his muscles he pops, yeah, he pops, he like pops and cracks. Yeah, his muscles so, yeah. seat. Yeah. But this guy in Dino Charge, it's more about the fact that he is a generally old man, though he can fight. Uh, but he does also, you know, his muscles also seize as well. Uh, but he, but again, he's more like, oh, I'm too old for this. Here's the here's the power, you know. So unlike Doctor All Shadow, who gave it straight to his granddaughter, he's just, you know, basically the ET mentor thing, wherever the hell it is. Basically visits New Zealand as well, and unbonds him with the gem, with the Dino gem. And then he pisses off back to America. And then you kind of thought, oh, all right. So, the, so they're all going to be back in, they're all going to be back where they are, where they were in the next episode. But this week's episode, they're still in New Zealand. And they're like, all right, we've got the Dino Gem, but we need to find the Plesiozord. So even though, you know, so again, because like normally, you know, like with both, Power, you know, with both Dino Charge and Kyoyuja, the you know the power normally bring you know normally the Mecha comes to the Ranger and then they get the power, but it's a bit sort of messed up where they get in Dino Charge they get the power and then normally the Mecha comes to them, but the whole time that the old man had the purple Dino Gem, he didn't have the Plesiosaur. So they're all like, all right, we've got to find out what's going on. Where is this Plesiozord and that? And then they rope in some random doctor, archi- not architect, archaeologist. Like, oh, can you, like, tell us where we can find a Plesiozord? And he's like, oh, go to the fucking sea. It's like, really no shit. And so they go around searching New Zealand. They find it. And then Fury, who's Dino Charges Dogold, uh, he's like, oh, I'm gonna defeat the Zord and stuff, and and then he so, and then there's sort of like some double crossing BS going on, and then they and then they find basically, and then to cut a really long story short, even though I've been going on already, they find the Zord, but because obviously there's no Purple Ranger anymore, the six Rangers actually control actually jump into the Plesio Zord. Right, so. Kyori Gold, in short, Kyori Gold controls Plazion. No, all six of them do. What? Well, you know, again, there's no Purple Ranger, and for some reason, they all can... You know, and then the Plezio Zord becomes a Plezio Megazord. You mean a Zord of its own, and then they yeah, do... Yeah, this, it's yeah, because yeah, it's, it's a Plesiosaurus. It's a, it's a, it's a, and it's a, it's a mech of its own that can transform into a robot of its own, and then it can yeah, combine so with... Yeah, you know, the fins and the head yeah, detach. I know, I know. There's some legs, and then it becomes armament. So, like, yeah. the head and the tail become armaments. Uh, so, basically, at this moment in time, all six rangers are in that one Megazord. Even though it's technically not a Megazord, because it's still... The same, it's just the same one mecha in a different form. Uh, yeah, so that's basically how that episode ends. I mean, I'll say, I mean, all right, so I'm going to put two things about, the, you know, specifically this week's episode. Is that one, there's, and this doesn't, this doesn't just apply at Power Rangers, this applies to Kamen Rider, Super Sentai, and anything else, any other kids show, really. It's like, when, so like I mentioned when the Doctor double crosses the Rangers, yeah. So basically it's like, this Doctor's meant to be like some famous archaeologist. And the Pink Ranger, who's like some, you know, like fossil enthusiast, she's like starstruck by this guy. And, you know, like, and so she'd already taken a video of the Plesiosaur before Doug Old attacked it. Well, Fury attacked it. And so when when Fury gets the Doctor to the double cross them, he gets him to talk to the Pink Ranger like, oh, well, I'll sign your book and stuff. But when she goes to get a pen, he picks up her phone, 
emails himself the video of the plesiosaur to himself, I guess. And then the next scene, you see him setting up a press conference and posters everywhere of the fact that he's got video of the plesiosaur. Which, you know, I mean, normally, you know, you'd, you'd think, well, it'd take, it'd take ages to set up a press conference and posters and whatnot. But he does it in the space of, like, you know, even if you wanted to, like, add continuity yourself, in within a couple of hours, he's already calling a press conference for it. It's insane. But again, a lot of shows do it. It's not just Power Rangers. And one thing I will definitely say about episode 19 is fan service. Now, the Pink Ranger, I think, is played by an actress called Camille Hyde. She's got quite a bit of a following on Facebook. And I'm pretty sure episode 19 was literally dedicated to her. Because, again, it's all about her and chatting to the Doctor and whatnot. But it's just, oh, my God, if there's anyone over the age of, you know, like, pre-adolescent, over the age of adolescent, it's just Bill. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I guess in short, that's me done talking about Dino Charge. What? I mean, so what? Yeah. Oh well, I guess you have no opinion. Nope. Oh, my only opinion was that what thing. But anyway. And you're meant to be a Power Ranger fan. Every time we talk about the reboot, you start acting all hype. Yeah, but when that wasn't, I talk about that wasn't a reboot. Power Rangers, you just kind of shrivel up into some like sort of thing. Sponge in disgust. I don't know what the hell you're on. Anyway, so let's rope you into this. Nininja. Okay, so I just watched uh, episode 37? Yes, that yeah. was, yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. And I think, without spoiling too much... No, no, we're talking about it. Go, because I've watched it. The computer game one. Yes. I loved it. That, I, it was insane. It was it, batshit. It, it, was was, it was one of the cleverest episodes of that series so far. Oh, um, no, no, no. Oh, that's a bit of a statement. No, 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 I mean as in clever-wise being that it was the way that they did that individual episode of its own, like when they first, uh, how can I say, um, at first, at the beginning, when Nagi was going to take this RPG computer game, I was like, oh, seriously, is he going to play a game in the house, in front of a laptop, sitting there for the whole episode? And then the grandfather just sucks all of them in, and then I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, what just happened? And then he takes the helm, and I'm like, what a sadistic prick. So, and then they're all in cosplay. They are literally all in cosplay. And even Fuka, the, the um, uh, Shiro Ninja, white, Ninja White, whatever you want to call her, gets... She was an elf or something. But it's a good look on her. It's fan service, man. I'm not complaining. The same for the cleric, you know, because Mama Ninja played a cleric. I was like, I don't remember it. You know, bear in mind, I've only played a few RPGs. No, Normally, I, I pl- no, no, warrior, the thing is, mage, ninja, monk, wa- warrior, but it's Whereas, not just that. I'm but, like cleric. No, 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 but it's and a then, healer. You, it's a he- was cleric's what? a healer. Right, that makes a bit more sense. But... No. What the hell was Aka Ranger? What oh, the hell boy. was Aka Ninja? He was just a hero. No, 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 no. Okay, so for your benefit... You got Yellow Fist Ninja. Stop, stop, Blue stop, 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 stop. Let me back you up a bit. Uh, you've got um, Red and Gold pretty much are like the Warriors. But that's the point. Gold was the Warrior. You know, your stereotypical Siegfried, I've got a massive sword. No, 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 but no, no. He's got the uh, big ass two handed sword, whereas um, uh, Aka Ninja had the sword and shield, so you can have two different ways of looking at that. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Blue was the mage, as yeah, of Mahotska. Mahotskai. Well, they do say K A in Wizard. 
anyway. Yeah. Um, and then you got Pink, that was the cleric, uh, healer. And then you've got uh, Shiro being the elf, so the ranged, the shooter, the AoE, or, you know, the ranged shooter. And then you've got Blue being the crossbow. AoE. Yeah, crossbow, bow, whatever for Shiro. And Blue would have spells from a range and AoE spells. Yeah, I know. Mage is a mage, yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. And then, um, I think, uh, Yellow was, the Yellow ninja. was like the, um, stereotypical ninja. He was the ninja. The ninja. Like, normally you won't have a ninja in RPG, but it's... Yeah. it's uh, it, no. oh, I mean, the original Final Fantasies had ninjas. Okay, then I'll take it back. But, but again, yeah, normally, norm, you know, like, you've got, like, ninjas and monks, but I guess, I don't know, I don't know, they just kind of, they kind of thought, screw it with Yellow, and just sent him in with his normal ninja outfit. Although, to so be fair, this was, a, this was supposed to be a game for him, so I suppose it's only fair to, like, make it for him. Right. Um, anyway, as a whole, it, I, I, I enjoyed I... that episode... Honestly, it was nice and refreshing. Um, yeah, it it was entertaining, honestly. And then just seeing gold and yellow just sitting in a I cannot fight crate was absolutely. So, oh, there it was... is that. That was a bit weird. Oh, oh no, no, it's a um, it's a nod on uh, old school gaming where you can only have about three yeah, or four. Of... Uh, normally, you don't have a party of six. Um, well, that's it, because most RPGs, it's like you've got your D-cross, you know, directional cross pad, and that's up, down, left, right, and, you know, whichever character you want to play, you you press the corresponding direction. Yeah. yeah. Every RP, in fact, every RPG... No, 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 my point, my point is, is now I think they're doing more like, okay, put it in the order you want them to fight. So in the party order, normally you set it like your top three would automatically fight. And so that, I think, in this circumstance, they pick two fights and then who stays in a I can't fight wagon kind of thing. That is but, a bit weird. No, no, I, I liked it. I thought it was rather... Nice than your stereotypical all six of us. Okay, let's end him. Whereas the some people have to stay on the bench. I actually liked it. It but showed like, it showed restraint. Well, the one thing is, I liked. I thought it was a funny episode. I thought it was well written, and it was original. That's why I liked it because they yeah. didn't. They didn't. They've never done. They've I, never I, really I, done anything like that. that I think of off the top. But you know, and it, I'm actually going to ask you this question after we finish talking about the ninja. But at the same time, I'm like, hmm, this is a bit of a strange filler. Yeah, you know, it's like a filler episode, but it's a bit strange. But then, did you clock at the end? Yeah. I thought it was a bit weird. Like, they're all sort of, like, happy, but... Um, yes. Kinji is yes. just looking on at them. It's like, well, normally he joins in, or someone ropes him in. But, but he instead, he off. just sort of... And he walks off. I'm just like, I want to see where that's going. Yeah, but not just that. As well. No, 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 no. Kuremon, if you go back to Kuremon, it's like, oh, for goodness sake. And then he devotes to the high priest or whatever thing. But that's it, because I've not heard anything. Because the last I heard was, you know, because like, obviously there's this thing between him and Kuremon going on. But I thought that was all sort of like, dead and buried after he got that sort of frilly thing. Super, you know, the red chinken, chinken. Yeah. You know, after the, he got the, the super... The, the blood thing. sword, yes, what about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't, I don't understand that one. It's a bizarre now. ending, but I've not heard anything rumour-wise about that. So that's going to be interesting. It will be. I can almost see like... Can you remember what the one, the week, because we haven't talked about it, the one episode 36, not, because that, because what you're talking about was last week's episode. The one before that was, the the one before that was Superstar Ninja. Yeah, so we haven't actually talked about Superstar Ninja. What did you think of that episode? Uh, If that kind of sums it up, it's literally, uh... Really? Oh, well, I did like uh, I did like the whole sort of 
him fighting himself and and this is also going to be another question I'm going to ask you later. Just the fact that you see, you know, you saw him across two episodes battling this yokai within him. And then just saw, like, the darkness that surrounded him in the, in the episode 36. And yet he still manages to overcome and sees that light of hope. I actually didn't mind it as a storyline. And, you know... And the thing about Ninja, and I've said this before, is it it has such a high contrast of strong and weak episodes. Like I will come off a batch of strong episodes, and I'll be like, "Wow, Ninja is really good." And then they'll just put out some random crappy episode. And it's just like, oh, it just jars my head. But okay. it does have a real well, high contrast of good and bad episodes. And another thing, actually, but I'm going to add to that. At least that had a bit of ump to it with its original sort of writing. Yeah. And then episode 38, which only aired in Japan, which has only just aired in Japan. Uh, this is having Magi Yellow in it. I so find that... Do you know what role he's playing? Yeah, Magi Yellow. No, no. Oh, as in, as in our ninja's teacher. I think that's yeah. genius. It's really out there, because they could have chosen... The thing is, they could have chosen the any they could have, of the Magia Rangers, no, 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 really. No, no, they could have brought but a stranger in. Yellow, they could have brought, one second. They could have brought a stranger in. Anyone. But they brought an original in yeah, this. And even this is the sly third... No, 40th. 40th. No, 40th, 40th, 40th uh, genius to actually bring in. Next year's 40th Sentai, I believe. Yeah. I thought this was 40. No, this is the 40th year, as in 1975 to 2015. Oh. But I'm not sure how it's worked out, because, you know, next year is 2016, and that's going to be the 40th Sentai, because I think uh, Go Ranger was a three-year Sentai, and then Jakku, I think they call it, Jack, Ace, Kui, Ke, you know, the card one. Uh, that was less than a year, but then Battle Fever J, you know, so like basically Jakku and Battle Fever J shared the fourth year. Jack, but Jack, Jakku, Jack or whatever. Uh, but again, I'm not entirely sure how that works out, but either way, this year's the 40th year, next year's the 40th Sentai, just as Bokenja was the 30th Sentai in 2006. And also, this just, you know, just to put my stamp on this, this me, you know, when it comes out next year, it will be me following Sentai for 10 years. A whole decade I've been watching Sentai. That's insane. Me too, actually, now that I think about it. But then, technically, I've been following it longer than you, so... I don't know what that means, because, again, I only clocked onto it just before Boken just started. Well, remember, I've done from Magic Ranger onwards. Uh, no, sorry, Decker Ranger onwards. So that's what twelve. So yeah, you big. So you, but then again, I've watched more Sentai than you. You mean Riders? I don't know how many Riders you've seen, but I've definitely watched more Sentai. Than you. No, you've done more pre. Okay. Well, no, because I have done Time Ranger to present day. Yeah, I haven't done Time Ranger. Then... I have done Jetman and I'm Jetman and up to Kaka Ranger, which I'll be talking about later. My bad, I forgot one. Abba Ranger onwards. There you go. Now that makes more sense. Okay, but I've still seen more. Screw you. This is like this is so petty. Anyway, anyway uh, so we don't really know much about. What if I still about have about to say, yellow. if I still oh, have, right, one, second, one second, one second, one second. Quick thing, and I'm still going to stamp on this. I still think uh, Superstar Ninja looks absolutely just... Look-wise, yeah, there's nothing that there's really... There's nothing. Is there's like... no wow. There's no... It's just... I mean, it's just a frilly thing. It's a just... frilly bit of curtain with a red sword. whoop de doo da Which was based on that yokai draining sword, I think, <laughs> I mean, even him, even when they did Star Ninja in um, 
Oh, Chorzets. I thought that was brilliant. And he gets a Ninja Ichibanto. I love that. I thought that was genius. Yeah. When they did that. And if they gave him a permanent form of that, I thought I would be happy. But no, they go with him having a little frilly garment. Nice. Uh, oh, and then, on top of that, they also introduce... Um, uh, Hao Geki Atsudayo, which I'm sorry, I do not give a damn for. Meh. Exactly. Oh, Geki Atsudayo. No, um... no, 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 no. Hao Geki Atsudayo. So when it combines. Oh, that's with... when they mix the Rodeo Maru, isn't it? Geki Atsudayo sits in Lion Hao. And then has the Rodeo Maru with guns or something. There's Rodeo Maru in it, I'm sure. Just Yeah, he's got the arms. Ah, oh, screw it. The only difference between Hao Shurikenjin and Hao Geki Atsudayo is the fact that it's just the... The, 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 the middle side. part, that's it. That's it. It's just... Yeah. But just to round off Ninja, uh, when it comes, you know, coming back to the whole Magic Yellow point, I'll say that, you know, they could have brought, you know, oh, all right, sure, they could have brought in anyone, but no, they brought in a Magic Ranger, which I... again is sort of a sort of nod to the fact that it's 40 years. Yeah. But then at the same time, we already know that the actor behind Magic Yellow likes doing Sentai. Because just... he's, be... he's already come back for Go Busters. Yeah, that's going to be the. As Magic Yellow. So again, they could have got someone else, like Mag well, yeah, Magic Green, because he was the leader. We discussed this the other week. Green would you have know. been an interesting choice. Um, me personally, I think uh, Magic Shine would have made a better right. choice. I was just about to say Magic Shine. Yeah, all right. I think yeah, Shine, I Shine would have pulled it off. Yeah, but he's probably too busy boning Magic Blue. Or have both of them in it. Who cares? What's stopping him? Budget, man. These people are on a budget. You can't just keep throwing veterans in there all the time, man. I mean, they went all out for go Kaiter. Isn't that enough for you? No. <laughs> oh. Honestly, go Kaiter. Honestly, I, I, I dare ask, how deep did that oh. wallet go to actually get all of that? Seriously. And it pulled I mean, off. Because even... Cause even what is it, Hurricane Joe, when they had, because the fact that Shuriken, you know, the Shuriken Ranger, Shuri, Shuriken, Shuri, the green one, Shuriken Joe, when, when they had the green one, they basically, he didn't have an identity, wait, have you seen Hurricane Joe? I know the premise, what's your point? Right, well, I again, know, I I know you get veteran actors <laughs> pretending to be Shurikenja, yes. No, 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 you get different veteran Sentai I know. Being Shurikenja. Uh, but anyway, but like next year's Duoja, I've not heard anything new. I saw a screenshot of it. I think I mentioned that the other week. Yeah. Um, but, and you know what? There's this one guy I've just been spreading so much hatred about. His name's Duke. I'm assuming it's a guy. His name's Duke One Twenty Two. He's put out three different rumors about next year's Sentai, and they all contradict each other. I don't know why anyone listens to him. All right. Do you want to read them out? If you know them. Uh, off the top of my head, he first he was the guy that put out that oh we're gonna get a space bug theme Sentai. Yeah. And then. He said, oh, we're going to get a traditional team, only that the pink range is going to be a flamingo. But now, Duke Mon 22 is saying we're going to get a set of three with the fourth and fifth joining later on. So, frankly, I couldn't get... You know, he could be right this time around. He could have been right last time around. He could have been right first time around. Frankly, whatever. Duke Mon 22, whatever. If you're watching this, whatever. You know, that's my rant over. Cool. Okay, no, I am going to go on to, uh, well, again, I don't know how often I'll be doing a section like this, but I wish to talk about conventions. 
Oh, there's yes. something interesting. Okay, go on. I'm, 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 you have yes. me. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, this idea came from one of our followers, a guy called Lazarus. Uh, so if you're watching this, hey, man. Uh, he, we've well, been outing uh, shout-outs now. Wow. Yes. We, well, we're no. bringing it to the real 21st That's century it, here. Yes, I'll give credit where it's due. But either way, I think it is a good thing to talk about because normally I'll occasionally mention the conventions I go to, which is mainly MCM. Uh, like last year, I met uh, Austin St. John, Walter Jones, David Yoss, and Karen Ashley. JDF. <coughs> right, you met JDF, you dummy SOB. And you know, you, you know, you go to quite a few cons in okay. Australia. So, so you, start, you start the. Um... You start the yeah, British I'll, one, and then I'll do the Aussie version. I oh, know. I mean, I oh, know this is it. I'm not just going to mean. All right, I'd, I'd say last month I went to MCM, uh-huh. which is a convention I go to. Well, it's a convention I. What go does it to. stand for? Uh, movie. Well, it's basically MCM Comic Con, movies, comics, media, Comic Con, which is comics twice. Um, again, it used to be called MCM Expo, but now it's called MCM Comic Con, which has the word comic twice in it. Um, well, you know, I went to the last one last month. It was all right. It was great fun. Uh, lots of range of cosplays, and, you know, it was fun hanging out with them. But obviously, not, you know, the big thing, you know, sort of Sentai-wise was last, well, Toku-wise, I should say, Last year we had the four, yeah, we had the four sort of we had original, the, the original Rangers. I don't want to say original because Karen Ashley was serious too. But anyway, uh, you know, I thought it was quite interesting to see. Oh, what do uh, Toku? Yeah, what do well specifically Power Ranger actors do uh, after they've done the show? Now Austin St. John seems to be, you know, and I might be wrong on this, but. From what I can see, Austin St. John and Jason David Frank are probably the two most active in sort of going to conventions and meeting people and just sort of hyping the fact that they were rangers. I mean, with Jason David Frank, he's, you know, he's like really hyped. You know, he's got this major link with Bat in the Sun. You know, they do, he, you know, they've done two superpower beatdowns for him and they've done a sort of web series for him, My Morphin Life. They were supposed to be doing some other uh, series for him. Well, two series of My Morphin Life, yeah, sure. Uh, but there was supposed to be some other series. Um, I think, what was it called? Kaz something or other. Where no, that's a movie. Some... But that's it. Nothing. No, that was supposed to be a web series as well. But that, that was... I know what you're trying to say. That action series thing. I think that's a movie. Yeah. Well, I heard it was supposed to be a web series, but either way, nothing's come of that since the trailer. But at the same time, Jason David Frank, I mean, I thought it was a bit strange when you said he came to Australia and you met him. But he's normally uh, dedicated to the Wizard World conventions in America. Yeah, he is. Whereas Austin St. John, he seems to be like going all around. But one thing that, and again, I'm not entirely sure how true this is but the evidence seems to be there that those two aren't, don't get along no and that's why they're sort of in two separate camps yeah and i kind of you know what i've kind of noticed is jason david franks seems to be real good friends with jason fawn who was the time for was the time force red ranger that's the american time ranger and then he seems to be good friends with Blake Foster, who was the kid Turbo Ranger. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've seen what he looks like now, but he's really hench. And yeah, you know, I think that kid's younger than me as well. It's nuts. Anyway, but Jason Fawn and Blake Foster, as well as Austin St. John and loads of other Rangers, were at the most recent, yeah, the most recent convention in America was Ranger Stop. Where you had literally all of SPD, uh, you had pretty much everyone except Kimberly and Trini from Series One, and even you know the three uh, new actors from Series Two, which was Steve Cardenas, John Youngbosch, and Karen Ashley were there, and there was just a whole load of other Rangers. I think they're trying to be the new Power Morphicon, or maybe it's another form of Power Morphicon. I'm not too sure, 
But that was the big recent one. And then Austin John, Austin St. John specifically, he's going to be in a, he's going to be at a convention in New York next month. Uh, so anyone that wants to go find him. But I think uh, two like really cool findings, uh, convention-wise, was I think a month or two ago, LA had its Kamikaze Con, uh, Kamikaze, which is a Stan Lee event. But yet he invited like rangers. There were loads of them, and they he invited the current Red Ranger from Dino Charge. You hear me talking about Dino Charge? Basically, Austin St. John, and oh, what's his name? Tyler, I think his name is. Anyway, the Red Ranger from Dino Charge. They both met for the first time, and that was quite special for a lot of people. Um, and as well, I've noticed uh, like a few months ago. A few of the zoo rangers were actually at a convention in America as well. I think was, that was Power Morphicon. No, was it? Which one was the one where um, you had uh, Tirana Ranger, a Geki, and then meeting Austin St. John and having that, was, that? That happened for the first time last year, but then this year, I think it was Red Ranger, Pink Ranger, Yellow Ranger, and the Black Ranger. They all met their counterparts from Power Rangers this year. Yeah, because I, I don't know if you saw the photos in August of Walter Jones with, uh, what's his name? Goshi. Uh, Goshi, yeah. So, you got, so I don't know if you saw that photo doing the rounds, but you had that. Oh! Um, he didn't take a photo with a uh, boy, but anyway. Um, but yeah, so you had Kamikaze Con. But then the big one was, I think this was a month or two ago, it was, I mean, I, I mean I, barely anyone has heard of Rhode Island outside of America, really. But there's a place in America called Rhode Island, which, well, for anyone that doesn't know, is where Family Guy is based. Uh, Rhode Island had its Comic Con, and two people that made a showing that don't really show to conventions were Amy Jo Johnson and Dave Fielding, who did Zordon. What? Yeah. So Amy the Jo Zordon. Johnson. Who, the Zordon. Yeah. You know, the round head in the glass tube. Yeah. The Zordon. And... The Zordon. Oh. And Amy Jo Johnson, who... And I know I've mentioned this on the show before. Uh, she spent so many years sort of shunning her whole Power Ranger thing and concentrating on her, you know, because she's a music artist, concentrating on her thing. I mean, I think about a year or so ago, she sort of did some sort of bet or something with uh, David Yost about, oh, if I can get this, I think it was so many likes on Facebook or something. Yeah. She would do like a street performance with her guitar wearing the Pink Ranger outfit. I and heard she about did. that. Yeah, yeah, I saw the photos. It's like, rah, that's so random. Yeah, I was like, but, where did that come from? But bearing in mind, again, she's shunned her sort of Power Ranger stardom. She she attended this Rhode Island Comic Con, or I think it's called uh, Re, Rico Con or something. Anyway, so that was quite special for those uh, who actually managed to attend it. But the one thing it's sort of like that's really strange is, again, you look at someone like Jason David Frank. Again, I know a lot of people uh, asked him to come to London, which he still hasn't. Mm. But I'm actually noticing that there is a trend with, again, I'm not too sure about Australia, and I know you've told me about a few conventions. But, you know, London and mainly France have, like, a strong following of conventions. But I'm noticing that countries like Hungary and even Greece, which is where Lazarus is from, uh, you know, they actually seem to be get, you know, they seem to be getting a convention circuit going, which I think is a really good thing for Europe. I mean, we in Greece specifically, they had their first Athens Con uh, last month, and you know, they got they had like a few big stars there. Well, not that well, you know, they they're basically from the industry. And, you know, a few actors as well. But I think as well, they, you know, conventions in Europe need to be able to attract people. And if, if any of them, 
them. And I know the guys behind AthensCon are trying to get Jason David Frank over. Trust me, people from all over Europe would go there just to see Jason David Frank without a shadow of a doubt. Um, what I'll say from, quote-unquote, the other side of the earth is... Um, yeah. Middle Earth. Huh? Middle Earth. Screw you. Um, no, basically in Australia, that uh, you've got your... How can I word it? The way it's done is almost like a slight America style in that it's like states. So you've got your Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and Adelaide um, conventions. In that, for Melbourne on its own, we get... In the order, it happens each year. So April, you get Supernova. Then in July, you get... Yeah, July. You get um, uh, Armageddon, uh, which is now renamed as AMC. No, no, sorry, my bad. What am I talking about? July is the Australia Comic Con, the Melbourne, okay. the Melbourne Comic Con, the big one. Then August is uh, no lies. Yeah, August. No, October. Sorry, is uh, Armageddon. August, October, somewhere there. Uh, um, which is now renamed as AMC, which is um, Australia Movie uh, Convention. Um, movie and Comic Book Convention. Um, and then in November, you get PAX, which is the big gaming one. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yes. I've never heard you talk about the gaming convention. Yeah, well... We have, we have... Our big one is Eurogame. Which, I don't know how Eurogamer did this year, because it was the first year in a long time that The I've reason I'm not bringing up uh, PAX is because uh, it doesn't really... It's gaming. Fit. Yeah, exactly. True. But I'm just bringing it up because it's a convention anyway, as is. But for the other three, in, now I'll be honest, I have not been to any of the other states of convention. However... I do follow in regards to the guest list to which where they go in regards to which state sometimes. Now, what I have seen is the year that uh, Jason David Frank came to Melbourne, Austin St. John went to a different state, if I That's remember. Dirty. They could have at least hung if out I, in the cafe if, or something. If I remember correctly, I can double check that right I'm not even now. surprised they even go to Australia. One sec, I will double check this. But if I remember correctly, Armageddon 2014. That was a supernova. Whatever. Anyway, my point is. Well, while you're looking that up, I'm going to say the one thing about the convention specifically in the UK. Is you know they call you know like they're starting to call them comic cons or rather they've been doing it for a, at least a few years now, but yeah I will see that it's more you know they more strongly push like they'll either push independent eyes which are or indie eyes which are good, but then it seems to be that the people attending are more enthusiastic about manga than you know manga than like say Marvel or DC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will say the one manga that really seems to be making headway, even though it's been going since 2009, is One Punch Man. Mm-hmm. And the one, th- yeah, I've been watching the anime, which is absolutely awesome, by the way. Obviously, this is going out the realms of Toku. But I love the fact that they reference Kamen Rider in it, in their Mugen Rider. And I think we all know that if. You know, if conventions could at least have a little more Toku in it. You know, even anime makes so much nod to Toku. It's unbelievable. I also like, you know, people have heard me talking so much already about Garrow anime. I just think there needs to be a stronger link between the manga anime community and the Toku community. And it will just basically mix everything up. And we can have stronger conventions that become more popular, in my opinion. What I will say is, um, uh, bu- 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 um, I think, um, there should be more, because 
apart from JDF, I have not seen any um, other rangers in Melbourne. Saying that, I've just looked up, uh, what do you call it, on Supernova, which is the first one coming, which is in April. And already in Adelaide and Brisbane, so they pretty much uh, side by side each other, um, they share guests. You get David Yost and Karen Ashley. Oh, sh- they're going. They're going to Australia. Yep. Well, that's kind of the thing, because I mean, from what I've seen, normally Austin St. John, Emmanuel Walter Jones, and David Yost normally stick as a threesome, but then sometimes David Yost won't be at all of them. Yet, you know, I'll find that Karen Ashley will stick to. Like the you know those guys as much as she can, but then at the same time, she's apparently doing some radio show as well. But I should probably look up on that a bit more, really, because I know she told me to. Lol, I'm sure she tells everyone to. But you know, I think it's a good thing what they do outside the show as well, because the one thing that I'm really waiting for, not just Jason David Frank side project with Bat in the Sun, I think it was called. I'm trying to remember Kaz Tatum or something. Uh, and yet, Austin St. John, I know he was trying to get some film funded or something. I remember seeing the trailer for that, and that also looked really good. But yet again, I'm just sort of waiting. I'm like, come on, man, when's this thing coming out? Because I would love to see more Rangers, like, after they've finished on the show, doing more stuff. Hmm. Like, other than that, I can't think of, um... Much. Uh, in regards to the... I mean, we more pop culture in that, um... You get a lot of, uh, Star Trek, Once Upon a Time, Namers kind of thing. You get, um... Uh, where else? Or where, uh, like some, yeah, again, Star Trek, Once Upon a Time, some Arrow, some Flash, like um, even uh, uh, Walking Dead's, um, what's that one called? Just, just really mainstream TV shows, really. Mm. So it, it's. Um, it, it's more like, I don't want to call it shoehorn, but. It, it. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? It's like it's yeah, like no. it's like in our case, the Rangers are an addition, not a not a featurette. Well, what you're talking about of the conventions, but mm. I know what you mean. But when you look at something like Ranger Star and Power Morphicon, and actually the UK had its first Ranger exclusive. Uh, event at the beginning of the year. I can't remember what it was called, but I just remember it was done in a hotel and it was mega expensive. It was something like a hundred pound a ticket, mm. uh, which I thought, you know, it's a really good idea. And it they had really good lineup. They had they also, I don't know, it's like uh, was it SPD or was it Time Force? I mean, because I know the Time Force crew got together earlier in the year at a convention. I think it was back in August. Or something. But I reckon it's really cool when you do see things like that going on. I don't see Wild Force getting together anytime soon, though, to be fair. Mm. Anyway. Anyway, um, so shall we move on? Yes, please. All right, so I've got a question for you. Uh-oh. Uh, there was, you know, like, we were talking about... We were comparing how uh, Red Ninja... No, Aka Ninja got his... Trozette's power, and how uh, Star Ninja got his Super Star Ninja. How do you feel about certain Sentai and Kamen Rider, or any other Toku for that matter, where when they need to earn a power, they'll either spend so many episodes getting it, or they get it in less than a second? What's your opinion on that? 
one so the amount of time okay okay okay, okay. The amount of time okay. Of hang on a minute hang on a minute hang on a minute hang on a minute hang on the next power up one of the most interesting earning a power up for me and the mo- one of the most memorable ones for me is wizards infinity okay that was more oh i wouldn't say he earned it i'd say it was more of an emotional thing that manifested a power but that's my point. He's still... It's like... Oh, okay. I, I like that one because it was so unique. Um, whereas... It was unique, it was emotional, but it wasn't... I don't know, maybe I'm being too much of an adrenaline junkie. No, no, like, it's just... Right, it's just... You're talking Wait, about... No, no, you're wizard. talking about earning. People that should earn that power. But it's so stereotypical. Like, okay, I will prove myself to said power or to said person to earn said power. So it's it's so cliche that, um, like, I have not seen even... And I'm, for those that haven't seen Gokaiji yet, spoiler alert, they don't have a superpower form. They just use others. Because they, they are the both. Exactly. So that is brilliant. Whereas now, or in the past, yeah, I mean, okay, best, good example. The only one I actually think that was a good uh, earnage, should we say, is Magi Ranger. I can't even remember how they got there. From. Finny, no, 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 because if I'm not mistaken, they were on the brink of death for using their superpower too much and then um, they pretty much got the resolve from Magi Mother or something or other and then in regards to... And then they got those dialer ones. Yeah, exactly. But they earned it because of the courage or whatever they had, which kind of... Oh, yeah, but the whole series was... It was about courage. courage. Yes, I know. But my point is is it, it just worked for some reason. Um, otherwise, I, honestly, I have not thought of any good, um, or a good point where there's been, I mean, even Bokenja didn't really have a super thing. They only had the... No, 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 that's where you're wrong, Mark, no, 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 because that was going to be one of my examples. Axel Tekta is really something to protect you from, from... The uh, the 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 the, uh, no, the, du- did the you duel. Did not bus. see how you know? I mean, it wasn't just the Axel Tector armor; it was also the Mecha Number Six. Oh. You don't remember? Basically, you know, it's they a, had to drill. train. They had to train. Yeah, yeah, they had to train in order to use the Axel Tector to be able to withstand it. But then, as well, there was. The, yeah, the drill mecha, number oh. six, where it's like, oh, I can't control it. But again, this is kind of what my question's about, because something like that seemed a bit weird to me, because again, this is why it was going to be one of my examples. Like the Axel Tech, you kind of thought, hmm, okay, fair enough. But the, you know, controlling the mecha, it's like, oh, my body can't withstand controlling the mecha. And then you see them, like, tra- doing the training in order to be able to use it. And like a similar example, which again was something that I was going to bring up anyway, you look at Decker Ranger, yeah, and I think, yeah, my point was about the time it takes, because you've got, like, say that number six mecha in Bokenja, they did that across one episode. You look at Red Akaninja getting the Lion Howl thing. Chose that, that bracelet. Was, that was roughly, that was roughly one and a half to two episodes. Now, Kinji in his current power, that could that's debatable. You could probably say that was like one episode or one and a half episodes, but really he only you know, the whole thing only manifested in the last half of that last episode thirty seven. With Kinji but though, then, that, it's a quick it's a quite opposite. It's he's more suppressed his power as in he suppressed his evil power. That's fair enough, and I guess you could say he could get away with that. Whereas you look at, like, my my prime example is going to be Decker Ranger in that the they had to mode. go away, the swap mode, they had to train to mm. use that across, you know, and even though I think they covered it in about two to three episodes, I think, 
you know, like that was just, re you know, that was just sort of like a condensed time. So really, they were you, you know, they were training in SWAT for a lot longer before they used it on the field. And then, how do you feel? And I know they do this in Sentai and Carmen Rider a lot. When you see them like trying to use a power, and when they're in training, they can't use the power. But then, when they're in a real battle, like fighting the real monsters and bad guys, it's like, oh well, this power that we've not managed to use yet is our only choice. They use it, and then they succeed. They always succeed, as far as I can remember. Yeah, like no point can, they fail. Hang on, I'll top or... you on that. I'll top you on that actually, in that. Um... There's actually been a point where uh, Gokai Green, he makes that uh, replica um, dual key core gun um, to add power. So pretty much the um, the epilogue, if you will, for or the prologue to the whole uh, Gokai Galleon cannon. And um, where there was the, uh, was it the dual key? And he tries to fire it, but it didn't work, and he just blew up two um, uh, key cylinders. And I thought that was a very interesting episode in the development of uh, the Galleon Cannon. Even if it's no super form, super power, whatever, it is technically a new armament for Gokaija. And but that the wasn't... the Even though it was Gokai Green doing it, it wasn't them as rangers to get a power as rangers although like, you know, no, 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 like, no, 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 quite the opposite quite the opposite they gave doing, like, they, loads of random hang on. Stuff. they gave um doc the whole armament um for him to work with so they were literally they were working almost barehanded against said monster and then you have uh, the whole, um, what's the word, the, the build-up to like, okay, yeah, admittedly, Gokai Galleon Cannon was a bit of a shoddy appearance of a weapon, but the whole premise of the build-up in the, can you do it, everyone else is fighting barehanded, do you know what I mean? It's it's that concept I like. Like you mentioned with the Decca Rangers, they're training in Doc's case. He's creating. He has this amount of pressure. Everyone else is fighting with no weapons, but their hands, feet, fists. Do you know what I mean? It It's so... It, it's so unique. And you do not need a superpower to earn that power or anything, Gokaija is a proof that you do not need a superpower to get or to gain something of that, you, you, you just, I, 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 it's hard to describe, like, but it, it's so unique, the, the, the way they portrayed that, and that story was, and even, even the whole story for the Gokai Galleon Cannon, a Doc was brilliant, and it, it showed a whole new level of him, and I loved it. And um, in regards to your question about do um, people overstate or do they do too much to the superpowers? It's either overstate or understate. Agreed. Like, even when... Um... Actually, I'm not going to say O's yet, but O's is a fine example of, like, more overstate slash WTFing. When you see, you know exactly what I mean. Um, in regards to the, okay, we can't use this power, but then we're facing a monster, can we actually... Gokaija is a good example against your comments. But I think, but I think, Go, I mean, this is it, because obviously I know how much you love Gokaija. The thing about Gokaija in the way that it was doing the whole 34 powers thing, some of them took less than half an episode. Some of them took two, three episodes. Because, again, they had to master 34 powers overall. And Earn. they had no super form. Earn. What did I say? Master. Well, that's... Well, I'd assume that was the same thing. But if it's not, whatever. But, again, they had 34 powers to get a hold of, nonetheless. 
So, and, you know, and they went about those in different ways. And again, Gokaija had no need for a super form, although you did have Goldemold! You know. uh, no, 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 that's that's aside, but anyway. But again, even, all right, so even if you want to start chatting about Gokaija and how, you know, because you already gave a piece about Gokaija's sort of, so, you know, like going through the powers and, do, you know, dark. But, you know, you look at um, Guy, Ikari Guy, he, you know, he, you know, because again, he, because his one was a bit more of a progression, because a few episodes prior to Golden Mode, he managed to mix the Go on Wings keys together, and he did that half gold silver mashup thing, and then it's like, and again, he's not really earning a power or fighting for a power or looking for a power. But he's like thinking of a way for some to utilize it. To utilize, and it's like, oh, I know, I'll just mash up all fifteen of the. No, six no, no, but no, but here's the thing. And gold then, mode. No, but then while he holds all fifteen of those six rangers, he actually asks each one, "Will you lend me your power? Will you lend me your strength?" It actually asks. Him, oh, sorry, it shows him asking them in person, each one. I only, re- I only, re- I only really remember the scene where he was with a Barry Killer Zoo. No, 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 no. That's when he first earned his um, Gokai Cellular. When he goes into gold mode, there's a scene where he earns the anchor key that. Um, he's in front of all fifteen of those sixth rangers, right in front of it, and he asks. Basically, he's bowing to them, asking, "Please, will you lend me your power?" And each That's one. That's not really earning power when you think about it. No, anyway. no, no. He asks, though. He begs, "Please, will you lend me your power?" And then. Well, that's each... pretty much the opposite of my question. No, but then each one that starts walking towards his side, he then, you know, obviously thanks them. But it's an interesting way, rather than any earning or creating or. Oh, all right. I mean, a different series, the one that followed afterwards, Geki Range. You see, you know, and I think these, I think you How had, is that following? As in the following year, Geki Ranger was the year after Go Kaija. What, what drugs are you on? Geki Ranger was after Go Kaija. No. Geki, no, Go Kaija was 2006, Geki Range was 2007. What do you think was between them? I do you Ganger in Cyber? No, I was moving. I was, move, I was move example. Oh. Right, so I'm actually I'm Geki Ranger. Geki Ranger. What the yellow? Year? 2007. No, but Gokaija was not 06. Oh, shit. Hold on. Yeah, Bokenja was Wait, 06. What the fuck? Bokenja was, was 06. Bokenja, I'm mixing them up. All right, that's my bad. Me. All right, fine. I'm my bad. You think? Because Go Busters was after Gokaija. I'm insane. That's my favourite series. Almost. Anyway. So, let, let me just go on to talking about Geki Ranger's earning powers, right? So you've got Yellow Ranger, who was trained up with that elephant thing for one episode. The same with Blue and the Bat. But at least the Red Ranger had at least two episodes with that shark character. So you had that for... That's another example. But then, Again, you know, they do the you know, super thing. I thought that was ridiculous, though. I hate the super f- training thing. Even though they still trained, fair enough. But the how was ridiculous. But this is it. But you do have... I mean, because, you know, you gave the example... You know, we were talking about Ikari Gaia just now. And, you know, and that's like asking for power. That's like... Uh, and then your first example was actually Wizard. And that was more of an emotional journey. Which was pretty much what... What's his face? Kinji, Star Ninja, pretty much did as well. I mean, not, not the same emotion, mind. 
But again, it was more about, it's almost like courage, really, because it was like... Thinking. One is more suppression of evil. The other one is more uh, expression but of still, emotion. But no, when it comes to Star Ninja, it's more of, you know, you say suppression of evil. It was more about the negative emotion that Kuraemon kept saying, oh, you're going to become one of us anyway, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, I'm better than this. So it's still an emotional thing. Different emotions... But, you know, you've obviously got, you know, whatever the hell Ikari guy did with the 15, you got, you know, so Wizard and, say, Star Ninja doing the emotional thing. And then normally it's either about learning a lesson or training up to be able to handle a power. That seems to be what the superpowers are on. And, well, yeah, you know, sometimes, and sometimes they spend less than half an episode and sometimes they'll spend two, maybe even three episodes. But, you know, I'm going to blow this conversation, I'm going to blow this up right at the end of this episode of Talking Talk. But I just want you to bear in mind, we had this discussion. So I'm going to leave it there deliberately. I'm going to leave it open. I'm going to move it on to talk about... All right, so you can rest up for a bit. I'm going to talk about Just the Risers for a bit. <sighs> no, but this is it. I uh, No, hold on. Oi, wait, oi. Turn your head, boy. I'm over here. Right, now, Just the Risers is still... No, you... Oi, you put your knee down, boy. Anyway, so Just the Risers, I'll be honest, it's really tedious watching it at the moment. I don't know when the hell I'm going to finish it. Because I've only, in the last fortnight, I've only watched about five, six episodes. It's really boring. But, in terms of progress, it's actually really weird. Because from uh, the stellar plates that they were looking for that I was talking about last time. Again, these these three guys are really incompetent. Uh, the blue one's just fan service. You're almost making it sound like these three guys. It sounds like a very great escape Tom, Dick and Harry kind of reference. I have no idea what you're talking about. But anyway, they basically, you know, they're basically facing off with the commander. Did you just say, did you just say, you, you don't know the reference of Tom, Dick and Harry from The Great Escape? Um, I've seen The Great Escape and that was like a million years ago. Anyway, so, you know, going back on to Toko, who specifically just arises. So, they basically have all these stellar plates destroyed. And the actual chief general emerges. And his name's Kaiser Hades, which I think is German for Chief Hades or something. Anyway, anyway this guy's a total badass. Because that commander then gets killed anyway. And it's really weird because his first episode, he spends most of it just grunting at the Justifiers. And then the following episode, he basically turns into Skeletor. I thought you mentioned that previous. No. Okay. Anyway, so he turns into Skeletor. And even though they were based in some really shitty little cave, he then ends up in a spaceship. He's so he's basically, and I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, you know, we talk about sets when we do our series reviews, but the set for his spaceship looks absolutely amazing. It literally looks like some mad fortress, and he turns into Skeletor. He's totally insane. He looks like the Shredder. But he's still sending down these stupid monsters to fight the Justy Risers in their shitty little mecha. But then again, their base mecha is called Riser Ross. And they've just basically ripped off Dragon Zord. Anyway. And uh, and then they basically they've basically done this thing where they're these two women that help them out and then and then Riser Glenn, who's the red guy, his dad finds out that they're all dusty wires and stuff. So he helps them out. And they're all based in like his little TV shop. And then just randomly, and I really hate it when they do this sort of shit in like Toku in general. Basically, you get Riser Glenn, who's like the leader Red Ranger guy. He's got some best friend who's like 
you know, he's just, oh, I've known, we've known each other since we were children. And, that. and then when he sees uh, Rise of Glenn with his henshin device, he's like, what's that? He's like, oh, oh, and then Rise of Glenn says, oh, this is my lucky charm that I've had for like, blah, blah, blah. It's like, but if that's his friend, he should have known about that years ago. So why he's bullshitting him and saying, oh, this is a charm I've had for ages. Surely his friend would have been like, oh, well, I've never seen you with that before. There's just no attention to detail with TV Tokyo. They're absolutely insane. They need to pick it up. Even in Garrow, I was talking about Garrow last time. They need to pick up on details. Anyway, that's my rant on Justy Rises over. Let's talk about Ghost. Right, well, okay. Stop, okay, I'm before say, I before I, I snort. No, bef- right. Before, All right. Okay. Now that you've woken up, go on. Let me be frank. One. And actually, I'm going to make a shout out as well on this one as well, because it kind of deserves it couple of things. One, I've just finished watching whichever the episode is when you actually see Spectre and then gaining the whole Nobunaga and the whole uh, Tutankhamun although when they say... In- oh, shut up. You're not behind, so you've not seen the Beethoven episode. No, I haven't seen the Beethoven one. Oh, come on, man. Oh, right. Anyway. Anyway. Oops. Shut up. Go on. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway. Um, Wait, I- have you actually seen it? No, you haven't. No. Oh, you dick. Anyway. Right, go on. So you can talk about episode six, and I'll have to dance around talking about episode seven, which I really want to talk about. Go you on. You can if you want, but anyway. My... I will. Okay. In episode six, you you actually see Spectre doing his first proper henshin as Spectre. I didn't mind that. I actually liked it. You then... A lot of people really like it. I mean, I think it's alright. No, 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 no. It's a bit of a spin, but lots of people seem to really love his henshin. Well, the thing is, is one, he, he gets a bit over-enthusiastic when he actually does the whole henshin sequence, if you know what I mean. He almost does a half-split, if you will. LOL. And, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. And then, but I love the blue on black in his outfit. I love that more than ghosts, but that's just a me thing because I love blue. Um, and then uh, when facing ghosts, he uses uh, the Nobunaga um, icon, which I thought was, it looked good on with the purple, the blue, the black and all that kind of thing. With the pony, samurai style ponytail, which I thought was brilliant. And then um, after that, he goes against his own ghost pretty much, and then uses the Tutankhamun slash a stunkado, which I don't know why they call it that in Japanese, but anyway. Um, I can then get this like pharaoh style head crest on him, but then Cobra becomes a, a sickle on them making his weapon into a scythe, which I thought was sick! But other than that, I... I an interesting... What do you make about his big-ass gun? <sighs> I didn't mind the gun. As in the aesthetic, when you have the finger like that, going like that, I like that. What I didn't like is the default mode is pretty much a, a, a big-ass slap hand. I didn't like it, but that I, I don't mind. No, but in episode 7... You basically see he's able to use the icons to power it, and whatever icons use, it basically makes it power on whatever the icon it is. Ah, oh, interesting. All right. You it know, is because he, what, like, he so... does have this kick-ass scene. He has this kick-ass scene in episode seven where he's fighting ghosts. Let me guess. He, he uses Edison and then creates an electric bolt out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, it becomes this big ass, you know, bigger, and it just zaps him. It's nice. like he basically tasers ghosts. Yeah. <coughs> but all right, but while you're choking to death, I'm going to say my general feeling about episode six and seven is, you know, I mean, ghosts, you know, like, you know, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, you know, there's a lot of mixed reaction about ghosts. Some people are liking it, some people aren't. But I'm feeling really disheartened right now because across episode six and 
I'm explaining. Across episode six to seven, just seeing Ghost getting his ass kicked by Spectre is get is yeah, you know, it makes me feel really sad and down. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm kinda like, come on man, this is our hero for the next Carmen Rider year. And he's getting his ass kicked. And meanwhile Spectre's all sort of like even though people are so sort of like, Oh, is he a good is he a baddie? Well let's face it. In episode seven, we see him, you know, like he's basically friends with that punk kid who's got silly hair. And but one thing we do learn is that that little old man with the hat, we do learn more about him in episode seven. And I'm actually like, well, this makes sense now. So there is still definitely a lot of good about Ghost. Um, but I'm just feeling so disheartened. Is one about thing. seeing Ghost getting his ass kicked, and I'm just you know like bringing it back. So again, this is part one of me bringing it back. You know, like how the hell is he supposed to earn his way up? And you know, I think uh, Spectre did give he some sort of book. that you are too naive. He said in uh, episode six that you are too naive, which I found is a very interesting thing. And he just basically... yeah, but that's it. He gives more. He gives more advice to Ghost in episode seven as well. Ad- so yeah. it's just kind advice of advice like, or lecture. Advice, because again, you know, he wasn't lecturing him when he was saying you're too naive. He was just giving a word of advice after he kicked his ass. Well, this is where... And then, <clears throat> and then he's like, he kicks his ass again in episode seven. But then that sciencey girl ends up in the mix and she ends up sticking up for him. And Spectre's like, all right, I'll let you go this time. It's like, oh, for goodness sake. But, I yeah, mean, this... I'm really being disheartened seeing Ghost getting his ass kicked. But I mean, this, this is... This is where I'm going to, you know, intervene and say that I, I watch um, two um, uh, toy or toy reviewers, uh, one of which is MGO316, which, uh, what's it, one of us, we will <laughs> add the um, links to if anyone is interested. And um, MGO316, when he does... He does mainly Transformers uh, toys reviews, but also he does do Sentai and Rider toy reviews as well, from SH Figure Arts to Lock Seeds to even this, the whole icons and the um, the the drivers and whatnot and whatever. And I think he 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 regardless of uh, if something is boring, he always makes it look fun and enjoyable which I really appreciate his style. Mm-hmm. Now, with uh, the other review I watch is uh, Spade of the Bolt Matrix, or in this channel it's just called Bolt Matrix. <clears throat> and um, he is after... He also does a similar thing, except he's more blunt in that uh, he has just recently showed the GC03 Four of uh, the um, toy line, the uh, of um, the Ghost Change product, um, mm-hmm. and this one contains Spectre. And his wording, and I almost quote, unquote, is, "I'm bored." Really? In that, it's almost the same thing in that he says uh, even with the tire Kokon series from Drive it, even though it was a uh, kind of thing but at least they all looked different in that all the tires had a different functionality and so on and so forth even the arms change series from Gaim were cross compatible they were all different they were so unique yeah, whereas, I see what you're saying. whereas, whereas I see. this one is just you're changing hoodies <laughs> uh, like okay, that, those words are from me, right? That changing hoodie thing. But I mean, if you get the well, concept, no, you're right. huh? You're right. Yeah, That's what it's, I'm it's just literally you're changing hoodies, and I'm like, he he really brings up a valid point, and that. Well, no, because some of them. No, wait, no, basically, Spectre is ghost, but with a bit of blue instead of orange. 
that is it. I'm sorry to word it that way, but... And after he worded that, he literally opened my eyes up a bit more. And, like, I took a step back and I thought, Oh, yeah, they're just all hoodies with a bit of different colour on. whoop de doo da I'm yeah, sorry. I don't know. Um, I mean, some of them are, some of them aren't. Like, maybe Musashi, Edison, Newton. And Robin Hood. No, this is it. Robin Hood I'll disagree with. Beethoven I'll disagree with. And what I've said of Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid actually does look pretty awesome. But Beethoven, I know you, because I think you said you saw it a while ago and you didn't like it. I saw it in scan form and didn't like it. But when I saw it in the episode, he actually, I actually thought it looked really good. I was like, oh, actually, I was like, I was like, oh, it didn't look that good in the scan, but, but the in thing, the episode, it actually looks really good. That's just my honest opinion. No, but the thing is, is it's just ever since the get-go from this series, or, or even after episode two, I was, uh, you know, I kept on mentioning how I feel about this series so far, and then I said, and I will say as I said back then I don't know I've never, never been so uncertain about a, a rider series of, of literally well, just I, by saying again, I, I don't think, know well I still feel the whole you know like just like you're saying you still don't know I'm still saying it still has promise I'm just saying you the last potential. two episodes has me really really certain you know he's just going to keep crying because you know no, he's still not got his Edison form back. And, you know, like, I've heard all these different rumors. Is, is I, this a way for him to deliberately cast so to deliberately show Ghost how to go stronger? Boo-hoo. Is that the actual way he trains? That, but it's not even that, though, because even if Ghost gets stronger, what's Spectre doing? And, you know, and he keeps conspiring with the enemy. It's just so much stuff that really disheartens me about Ghost, but... You know, I'm still sort of holding out, so I'm not. So you know, I'm not going to confine it to the go on Jabin just yet. Don't tempt me. I mean, Hibiki, yo, know, the go on Hibiki bin. That's like an abyss. <laughs> I really don't want to confine it there. I mean, you know, I mean, Gaim, you know, if you just watch the last three episodes, that you definitely can find it to the bin. But at least Gaim had a good beginning and middle. Long, mind you, long. It, but, it but, was long, but then. What but the, the hell no, 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 wait, 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 wait. If we're talking about Gaim, just say, no, no, like Why I told you Gaim? so many times, the forms were good, the story was long. The forms were good, the story was long, the ending was shy and irrelevant. Agreed. Right. I mean, even the more consistent one, Wizard. Good story, good forms, shit ending, as in the, the extra wizards, shit, but the whole story... You're lazy and rushed. I know, right? So, I mean, Drive. Good forms, some of which were a bit, uh, but still, good form, and good story... The story, Spend... at least the ending was good enough. I was satisfied with Drive's ending. Yeah. Minus the. Even the crossover. Anyway. Even the crossover for Ghost Episode Zero was good. Yeah, yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah. Alright, so I am oh. going to go on to talking about the final topic. Kaku Ranger. Oh, oh my goodness. I've spent, yeah, you know, like I've been writing on all the different Talk Facebook Talk about groups. nostalgia. Basic, have you seen Kaku Ranger? Way back when, once upon a time. Right. There's, you know, the only thing I can, the only way I can describe this series is batshit crazy. If anyone wants a very, very general synopsis of Kakaranger as to what they want to expect from a style of Kakaranger, go watch Gokaija and then you get the general sense of it in one episode. Because there's one episode in Gokaija when they fight, literally they do the whole Kakaranger slash and then you get the Batman style. Yeah, what is that about? Right, 
firstly, you know, the one thing that strikes me about all these 90s Sentai is their soundtrack. Zoo Ranger, you know, Jetman and Zoo Ranger were, you know, they were off the bat original. Now, Fire Ranger gets off on the Imperial March from Star Wars. It's insane. It's like, why? Who's why this? are you doing this? Die Ranger. This is the one before Kaku Ranger. That's the one with, like, the White no, Ranger. No, no, no. I, I, no I know the Die Ranger one, but I didn't know they used it. They stole the Imperial March. No, they ba- no, they don't steal it. They rip it off. They basically rip off the Imperial March for the whole series. Right? Oh, no. Now, Kaku Ranger, I don't know what's gotten into. I didn't know what got into the composers this year, in this particular year, but they they were ripping off the Mortal Kombat thing. No. Right. So okay, it's bad so- enough that Fire Ranger the year previous was ripping off the Imperial March. Every so often in Kaku, and I'm. Yeah, you know, bear in mind I've been watching Justin Rises longer, and I'm only on like episode ten or twelve. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna add, I'm, I'm gonna currently on episode sixteen of Kaka Ranger. Just every so often they have a climatic battle. Dirt, 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 yeah, they just rip off Mortal Kombat. Can I add one for you? Um, right. Would you also add the story premise from the beginning is a rip off of uh, Zoo Ranger? Slash Mighty Morphin. Right, now this is what I was going to come on to. Basically, the for the way viewers, hang on one second. Right, 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 right. The, for the viewers, for everybody, anyone with ears, or yeah, anyone, anyone that's listening. Elves. Basically, basically, Kaka Ranger, the way I see it. Spoiler alert! No, 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 this isn't spoiler. It's basically Zoo Ranger, Die Ranger, mashed together. While the writers were on acid, <laughs> so, oh, this oh, series oh, mix it mix it with sixties start... Batman. Stick, uh, stick could, the, yeah, yeah, the best fine. Batman. Stick, shit, stick the Batman original shit, crazy shit you can think of. Yeah, stick They're that, just mixed the in together, and they must have been smoking some <laughs> mad sh- writing. What bit. year was that I series mean, of Batman? Eighties. Nineteen. Oh no, the Batman series was sixties with Adam West. Yeah, that one. But this, right, and this is kind of the thing. This is a 90s, this is bang in the middle, mid-90s, 95. And it's got some, like, wacko 80s theme, mixed with some 60s theme, mixed with whatever the hell was going on in the writer's mind. There's no story format. Right, the way I see Kaka Ranger up, get, going up to about 16, 17, which I'm on at the moment, you've basically got episode one. They introduce the first three rangers. Episode two, you've got the fourth ranger. Episode three, you've got the fifth ranger. And then that episode wait, after that, wait, they do wait, the gap time with the mech. Wait for a minute. Hang on. After that, wait, 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 wait. Slow down, slow down, slow down. So in episode one, you start off with a white ranger recruiting the blue and then the red, correct? Yeah. yeah. Right, and these guys are punks. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like the fuck. You know, what whereas, whereas the White Ranger was already the uh, prince. Yeah, White Ranger was established. So if you remember the talk we had last time about, you know, not it's not always the Red Ranger that's the leader. Kaka Ranger, it is the White Ranger. She is yeah. the bomb, seriously. She is the... Oh my she, God. She's a right. general. She is a gun. Right. When, I, right, when we talk about Kaka Ranger as well, the one thing, I mean, the one thing about 90s Sentai is how things are are not politically correct. Right, so in Jetman, you literally see, uh, what's his name, the Black Ranger. Guy, I know his name was um, Condor. Yeah. Condor, like, consisting in drinking. Right? Now, I don't know who the hell that Wantor is. He goes up with a cigarette on a... And then, I mean, because for the first episodes, you basically get women that are in Kaka Ranger, and then just ran around the episode, you see the yellow ninja cracking onto white ninja. It's insane. But <laughs> not just that. In episode so two, you, re- they recruit yellow ninja, and then... Yeah. And then, uh, so in the, and then also the Black Ninja. But then the Black now, Ninja has probably the, so 
annoying. <laughs> he has the most broken Japanese English. No, no, no. That's irrelevant. The fact that he speaks English in such a strong American accent because he's from America and stuff, it cracks me up. Every time he opens his mouth, every time he opens his mouth, this is I'm how like, this is how oh, Kinji this is how Kinji should have been. Well, yeah, I get you know, and that's it. I was making comparisons to Kinji in my head already. Yeah, um, like what, uh, but, I mean, we're talking he, about his ninja, his his ninja, 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 star ninja. His this is and he's 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 just he just makes me laugh just when he opens his mouth. And then Yellow Ninja, he is batshit crazy. I'll, I'll get confused between the names because you've got Red Ranger, who's Sosuke. Uh, White Ranger is something like Tsuruhime. Tsuruhime, which means a uh, swan princess. Yeah. And then I always get me. And then I know either Yellow or Blue is called Sen. Or Sekai. Crane Princess, but it sounds better Swan Princess. But anyway, go anyway. on. No, because she is based on the crane. Yeah, so uh, so the princess of cranes. Anyway, and right. So when it comes to story format, there is none. It's like the you know like you know, if, like, if you want geography, I think the choreographer range is good, but I'm not because they're just like, they are all, all over the place. And they're jumping around, and you know, and, <laughs> no. this is, and this is the series that obviously brought the whole. The villain grabs, them, they disappear out the clothes, and they're just holding the. And you know, I'm not sure if they do this, but Hurricane and uh, Ninja do it, yeah. where it becomes like a straw man. No, they they should do it as well in Kakaranger, if I'm not mistaken. I think they. I mean, again, I think I. But you see it more the clothes. Yeah, you, know, you see like the clothes left behind. I also like the quick henshin in Kakaranger, where they just throw their clothes off and they're instantly rangers. No, That's... they're not instantly rangers. They have no, the. No, 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 they are. They are. They are. They don't henshin. Yeah, you know, like sometimes they henshin with that Doro changer thing. Doron. Well, uh, I know, see it. Basically, uh, the whole anyway. drum means. No, because no, no, they'll be in their normal clothes. They just do that, and then they're in ranger form already. But if so anything. They do that a lot. But when. Now, just as a tie in with the Kaka Ranger, when, um, when uh, Ninja Red appeared in um, Nin Ninja. Oh my goodness, did I have the biggest uh, case of nostalgia. Seriously. And then when you hear the theme, da, 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 you know, it's like, Super Henge, Doron Tenja. And I'm like, oh shit! Seriously, it's like nostalgia on epic level. This is it, because I didn't know anything about it. No, remember, when I, watched, I, when I, I watched this. this. Hang on. I, I watched this. I saw Super Henge. I did, a, I did just instantly think of Ninja. No, no, quite the opposite. This was literally my first Ninja series because I watched, like, not all of it, but, like, the first handful of episodes when I was, well, young, young. Like, maybe... 15 years ago, give or take, if, maybe yeah, more. Yeah, it is, hold on, Kaka Ranger is, no, 20 years old. Yeah. Maybe, if that. So, yeah, like, I, I watched this way back when. Like. Well, anyway, uh, so I'm just trying to think what it was. So, yeah, you, you know, like, the Henshin's mad, uh, and, you know, they have this, like, random truck bus thing that they drive around in. Nekomaru. Oh, my goodness. This is... Trust me, there's just nothing... You know, everything and nothing makes sense in this series. Like, the thing is, once they've established the Gatai Mecha, it's basically about ten episodes of filler. You know, normally, you know, and again, I don't know how you feel about filler. We were talking about fillers earlier, and we talk about fillers every so often. But when it comes to Kaku Ranger, it's like I've just sat through ten episodes of filler, 
And I'm just like, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm like, this is filler. This is random. But the thing is, there's no real, there's no real, you know, in these filler episodes, there's no real story. It's just random crap happening. And they're being batshit crazy about it. The writers were on acid, I'm telling you. I mean, and then you've got, like, the foot soldiers, the henchmen, who are called, I mean, they're called, you know, they, they must have, like, they call it the Doro Doro Doron Changer, but then those blue guys with the screen faces, they are also called the Doro Doro. And yeah, they, they do some. They, they might be called Doro Doro, Doro, but then you've also got the Doron Changer because. Uh, no, no. You literally sometimes go. It's instead of going. No, hang on. It's insane. No, hang on. Instead of going Nin Nin, sometimes you go Doron. That's why there's the reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter because this series is batshit crazy, right? And they're so lazy with the mean, you know, the way I see it is, you know, you either like Nimble Mecha or you don't. Because, you know, you either, you're either okay with, say, Dai's Eugen, for example. Like, sort of, when it kicks, it lifts its whole flipping leg up. But then... Oh my! Well, we, you go, you, if well, you're you, totally fine with a clusterfuck being just some big hunk of metal zapping you. Or, but then if you look at, say, you know, I mean, it's more common, you know, it's more common in the CGI years, Gower Ranger onwards, where because yeah. they're using CGI, you can yeah. actually see like individual the mechas properly. Yeah, you know, whether it's the armaments or the individual mecha or the Gatai mecha. They are more nimble because it's CGI. But then you look at Nininja, you see the Shinobi Maru like somersault in, but then when it runs up walls, that's CGI. But, but then. Now, but, you, but going to Kakaranger, which was 95. This is Mateki Dai Shogun. Oh, Mateki oh, Dai oh, Shogun! No, no, I mean, I'm not talking about the Gatai Mecha. Oh, right. I'm talking about five individual Mecha. It's so clever. They are nimble. They are fighting normally. And then, later on, so once they've got past this block of filler, which, again, batshit crazy. Now, <coughs> you heard me, you know, we, I asked you a question earlier, deliberately on purpose to build up to this moment, LOL, about, you know... The climax. Um, about, no, about earning power, right? So, you know, we were talking about how Star Ninja took half an episode. Chosetsu for Red Range for Aka Ninja took about two episodes. SWAT took whatever. All this is irrelevant. Kaku Ranger was an instant when their mecha were like, you know, because they had the original mecha with the five. They got beaten to a pulp by some random monster. They then randomly pull out this coin. You know, there's no background to it. You know, it's not like uh, Decker Swan or that weird guy with the ice cream cone in Bokenja uh, developing shit in the background. Kaku Ranger. It's like, oh shit, our mecha's fallen apart. Pull out these coins and produce five whole new mecha called the Juso Fighters or something. It's like, where the fuck? Where the fuck did this come from? You know, and again, I've done this on purpose. Dec you know, swap mode, two, three episodes. Red Aka Ninja, two episodes. Even Kinji, half an episode or however much you want. Kaka Ranger, you know, and again, even Geki Ranger spent an episode each on each of their mentors, the bat, the elephant, and the shark. Kaka Ranger, an instant. It's like, where the fuck did this come from? What's the story behind that? How did they know? The thing about Kaku Ranger is you kind of think, apart from, you know, we don't get given that much of a backstory about White, you know, white Ninja, but we know that Red and Blue are punks. Uh, I'm, I think Yellow was a punk as well, and then Black was from America. That's literally all. Yeah, you know, and Listen he's it. kind of an ninja. He's kind of a ninja anyway. Isn't he an explorer? Ninja, explorer ninja or something. But he kind of knew. But he knew about the power. He knew about becoming a ninja and stuff. You know, he helped them uh, find some scroll thingies. I've forgotten now. Anyway, but 
again, you know, all right. So we basically, you know, and again, the thing about the good thing about you know decent Sentai past, you know, the nineties is they'll put a lot. They'll put some attention in development. Kakaranger is batshit crazy. Nothing. Yeah, you know, there's no format to the story. So, you know, you do see like a couple of early filler episodes where like Red Ranger will be like, oh, well, I've learned this. Who the hell taught you that? No, we're, not, we're not told. We're just told that he's learned something. Like, while there have not been an episode. And then, so, so like, by the time the fillers are over halfway done, they are expert ninjas now. It doesn't make any sense. It's batshit crazy. But it's genius because there's so much there's not that much attention to detail we're not bogged down with detail we're not bogged down with story it is enjoyable that's the weird thing and the one thing do you want I to, need hang on hang on hang on do you want to also mention why we're using the Adam West 1960 series of Batman I think we've already said because in their fight scenes you'll just see you they'll get hit and then you'll get like boom written across the screen oh pow or slash pow. Zam! Yeah. yeah. But one thing I need to talk about before I talk about the final bit of watching Kakaranger is there is Harator going two, three. You don't remember this. There's basically, you know. Oh, yeah, at the beginning. Was, at the beginning, there's no, 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 like normally, you might get a little bit of action at the beginning and at the end, and then you've got Geki Ranger, where we talked about I think the, the Zord battle, yeah, the Mecha battle. But Kaku Ranger, at the beginning, at some point, you know, one or twice in the middle, and then again at the end, it's this really weird old man who, who he's not even in a wooden house. He's just sat with a wooden background that's actually movable. And he comes out with some batshit crazy things. Normally, he'll set up the episode. He'll be like, oh, this, you know, he'll be like, oh, hello. Well, yeah, almost like me. Well, thanks for tuning in. He'll be like, oh, you've joined us for another week with the Kaku Rangers. It's like, okay, yes, we know. And then he'll be like, oh, they're doing this right now. It's like, all right, thanks for telling me. I'd have rather found out myself. Then some batshit crazy shit happens. He'll make a comment about it. He'll make some witty remark. That's fine. And then when the monster appears, when the monster of the week appears, he will pull out some, like, sort of Edo-era cartoon of how this particular monster's based in folklore, Japanese folklore legend. Now, specific, and again, I mentioned about how perverse this series is. In it was either episode, I think it was episode one or two. You've basically got this green frog with some pink head thing, and it's like, oh, this monster is based on a Japanese legend of this monster that pinching girls. And he adds, but then again, I like. Like that as well. <laughs> I just went out loud. I was just like, is this guy for real? And he thought he does this in every episode. And again, I'm up to episode 17, you know, 16, 17. And he, he's just But I am actually gonna round up. I'm I'm sure I've missed anything I've missed out talking about Kakra because there's so much there's so much yet so little in Kakaranger. Because again, the story is virtually no story up until the last two, three episodes that I've watched. Where it's literally ten episodes of filler. Monster of the Week, the occasional Child of the Week, Child Cries, Blow Boo Hoo Hoo. But, you know, there's very little going on in these filler episodes. And yet, it's just filled with artistic, mad BS. But big crunch as to where I'm at at the moment is episodes 14 to about 16, 17. They in, so basically, all these monsters have come, have come about based on the fact that, the again, the red and the blue ninja 
accidentally release the leader of the yokai, but you don't see what happens after he's released. He just disappears. And then you just see all these random yokai that have been dwelling on the earth for millions of years or something, just sort of randomly acting up again. That's based, that's the premise. But then just randomly, it's like, oh, he has a, you know, like the leader of the yokai has a son and he's called Prince Junior. Now, again, for those who watch Power Rangers, this is this is the character that became Rito Revolto, Rita's brother. But in Kaka Ranger, he is the lead. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense because uh, in Power Rangers Series Three, you've got Master Vile, and Rita and Rito are his son and daughter. So I guess it kind of you know, kind of got that similarity. But obviously, with this being Kaka Ranger, there's no Bandora or Reed or whatever. You've just got... I can't remember the leader's name, but he has a son, Prince Junior. And he's like... You know, he is Rito Revolto. You know, if you remember what Rito Revolto looks like, he's like this skull. He's got, got this militant look about him, skeleton. And like the thing about the yokai in Kaka Rangers, they all have a human form and a monster form. Now... Prince Junior, in his monster form, he is a skull with like half white, half military, and he's got a skull helmet. But then his human form, he's like this punk rock person. And the artistic, you know, there's a lot of artistic merit behind this. You know, he has his own base, which is like candles everywhere. It looks really dark. It looks, you know, if you like that gothic look, it looks awesome. And, like, the first people he sends out, he's, he, he gets these two monsters who are brothers. And then he has these five female ninjas. Who I can't remember the rangers, but the evil rangers. And at this point where you've got all the we've had like 10 episodes of filler they kind of established the kaka range as sort of like cocky and oh we've got this ninja thing you don't really see ninja, the blue ninja or the yellow ninja training it's like you know they learn it and all of a sudden they're master ninja so they're, they're all really cocky and, and you know oh is it a yokai again all right we're gonna go kick their ass so basically they get their ass handed to them by this real, you know, this ain't no Prince Gil from Gaia. This is the total opposite. So this is the son of the main role. And he is so, so badass. You know, like, I, I've literally, again, before we, about a few days ago, when I knew we were going to be recording, I was like, oh, when I come to talk about Kaka Ranger, I'll just establish the first three episodes, establish the Rangers, and then go from there. Roots it to the Kakarames. It's like, you know, you know, I mean, because it's real fun watching like the Kakarangers bicker, bicker and argue and, you know, whatever stupid shit they're coming up with next. I mean, the episode where Yellow Ninja declares his love to White Ninja, that was insane. But just seeing their ass handed to them after being so cocky, it's like, raw. And like the way that the five female evil rangers just chuck Red Ninja off a bridge, it's still insane, but it's just like, OMG, this is actually, this has really caught my attention now. And I think it really does justice to the series, because, you know, me and you, we complain about, uh, you know, we can, compl- you know, we can complain about filler episodes, you can hear me talking about Ninja, oh, you know, it'll be good, and then they'll chuck out a crap filler episode, and you can say that about any Sentai series. But the thing about Kaka Rangers, they did a block of 10 filler episodes, which puts the viewer in some sort of like, you know, not just so, you know, the Kaka Rangers can be cocky 10 episodes into the filler, but it also puts the viewer like, you know, you could be like, oh, well, blah. But then they put it, they're not just putting it to the Kaka Rangers, they're putting it to the viewer as well. It's insane. It's anyone who hasn't watched Kaka Ranger. Again, I would, even though I'm only, again, so many episodes in, I wouldn't recommend this as a first Sentai, simply because you'd have to know what Sentai's about before watching it. 
and it really puts it it's just holy shit just, a, just, just as an unwind in regards to Kakarangia, um, would you say when they do the whole henshin sequence, would you say it's a similarity to Thunderbirds theme tune, just the beginning part? Oh, that's a really awkward question, because now we have to go back and watch it. Because um, I wouldn't make that. Again, I already made the comparison, because all I can hear... No, that's people, my point. No, 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 but I'm talking about when they do the whole Super Henge, Doron Chenja thing. Do you think that whole, just that part where they do the whole, um, when they get the Doron Chenja out, do you feel like you're listening to the Thunderbirds opening sequence a bit? Because sometimes I do. I'm going to look out for that now that you've mentioned it, but off the top, no. Alright, fair enough. Anything else you wish to add? Oh my god, there's so much I could talk about Kaka Range, and I'll probably have to end up talking about it next time. But, right. you know, again... No, I meant this... different, different, different. I'm still on Kaka Range, man. I thought you read that. No, no. I mean, like, again, Kaka Range. Uh, I don't know. I guess I have to leave for next time. I'm getting, brain fr- I'm getting mind block right now. We. Well, nice seriously. Yes, I'll have to then uh, who knows what's going to happen in the next few episodes. Like Prince June, my God, what a badass. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Are you done? Yes, I'll have to be, because I've got mind block. Oh, cool. Alright, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> if, there's an, if there's nothing else from your end? That's it. <laughs> That's the best you can come up with. No. Um, please type, like, comment, subscribe. How you feel, whatever. Let us know. Uh, uh, I've been Adam Bushida. He's been my token bro swinging on some H2O on the other side of this flavor man. And as always, join us next time. This has been our Toku Talk. And as always, Fizzicam! This was a cam, that was a really long ending. I don't care. Alright, see you next time.